right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. Um, we were, of course, talking about eradicating jiggers. A final question did come in while we were on break. Someone uh, from Imara, Florence from Imara Daima here asking uh, if there are any first aid measures for persons with jiggers or if they must visit a health center. Uh, Cecilia did say you can even just do a simple foot soak with uh, antiseptic uh, to disinfect the foot. It will kill the jiggers and they shall you know extract themselves that way so a very quick simple and affordable way to treat that but with that said we want to move on to our next discussion for the day which is healthy meal preparation even as we get ready for the top of the hour now preparing quick and delicious meals uh, three times a day can sometimes be or feel impossible given, you know, everything that we're dealing with in our day to day lives, our hectic schedules, just so much going on in life. OK, but by using some simple tips and planning ahead, you will be blown away at just how easy cooking delicious, healthy meals can be. To tackle this with me, I have Faith Kamiri who's a certified nutritionist. Welcome to the show. Thank you so Good much. Good to have you here. Thank you. Now, talking about healthy meal preparation, certainly there's that perception that it's too expensive, yeah, yeah. it's going to take forever, yeah. it's boring because yeah. you guys just tell us to boil everything. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? No, it's not. But <laughs> I hear you and I hear because even with my clients when we are coaching, the intention is there. Everyone wants to do the right thing. We all want healthy bodies, but the thought of boiling all your food all the time yeah. is that kills everything yeah. no it's not true um healthy food can and is even more delicious than mm -hmm. whatever we perceive to be amazing yeah. and it's just a matter of preparation no you don't have to boil your chicken no you don't have to boil your potatoes you can you know bake them in the oven you can use spices you know spices are natural um they are um, therapeutic, some of the spices, mm -hmm. so you're not only getting a tasty meal, um, but you're adding value to your body. Um, and so healthy food is even more amazing than fast food, I would say. Yeah, and yeah. these fast food joints are, are rising quite quickly yeah. here in Kenya. Yeah, um, unfortunately. And it's funny because, you know, typically in Kenya, I feel like we've healthy food has almost always been easily accessible and a lot cheaper it was um whereas in the west it would be so expensive right, right. but now it almost feels like we're flipping that table around where fast food here is also becoming so easily available yeah, yeah. um at cheaper and cheaper rates you know i think you really hit it and i'll tell you that this is one of the main reasons that drove me into being a nutritionist because mm -hmm. i saw it like if you think of us as children we grew up more natural you know our parents grew up up country they were eating from the farm mm -hmm even though we were living in the city or for those who moved here later we still were eating you know sort of the sweet yeah. potatoes for breakfast or your uji but then now you look and it's everyone can have soda in their house you yeah. know we never had that before people yeah. can have big uh, you know can fry their chips at home so it's changed and um in a way i think mentally we also feel that it's cheaper because it's quick you mm -hmm. know you can go to you're near fast food restaurant and buy chips for 50 bob and mm -hmm. it feels like a lot of work to go to the market mm -hmm. but i think if we just sort of paid attention we'd realize it's not that bad that it's still relatively affordable to mm -hmm. be able to buy your vegetables as opposed to buying a pizza every other day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Although, can can we have like, you know, I'm I'm just a tank for you guys. I'm not even asking for myself. I'm just a tank for you people. <laughs> um, you know, fast food. Yeah. Like junk food, like right. cheat days. Right, right, right. I'm asking for, for the audience. You're asking for a friend. I'm asking for, exactly. <laughs> um, whether it's okay to have a cheat day. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would say is, because the truth is no one can be 100%. Yeah. And at... Um, even at Wellness in Full, which is my consultancy, I tell my clients, if you aim for 100%, you'll be okay maybe for a few weeks if you're that type of person who's very focused, but at some point you fall off because we live in a social world anyway. Yeah. You know, there's dinners, there's parties, yeah. there's your auntie hosting, you know, Life a lunch or something. Yeah. When people find out you're not eating cake, they will buy you cake for sure. <laughs> but if you're eating healthily, 
70 to 80 percent of the time okay i promise you and the research has shown this that your health will be so much better if yeah. you're trying to lose weight you will lose weight just trying to be healthy 70 to 80 percent you're of more the likely time. to stick with it for the and you're run. more likely because it's realistic mm -hmm. you know and then you know five days of this week i was really good but now i have a wedding i'm really yeah. looking forward to it i can enjoy it without guilt also yeah. we yeah. want to take away the guilt yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we we function on rewards yeah life does exactly every, yeah everything yeah okay so you've already mentioned a couple of, of things but generally speaking what would you say are some of the foods that we should just try and steer clear of so I would if say we're doing it over excessively right sugar sugary foods mm -hmm. right um, I would say probably the worst combination is sugary foods with fat so sort of like mm. your baked goods and that combination chemically induces such a pleasure system in the brain mm -hmm. but it's also very addictive mm -hmm. that's why you find you can sit you know with like a bag of crisp or you can have ice cream on and on and finish yeah. a whole tub yeah. or you know you'll have your mandazis and realize i've had um, but the combination is very addictive to the brain <laughs> you know um and what it the problem is that it's really delicious really even i agree it's delicious but what it's doing to our body yeah. right now we won't know but when we are 60 and we're all sort of struggling with you know our diabetes and blood pressure it started you mm -hmm. know 40 years ago and just mm -hmm. accumulated yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and where does meat play into that um i guess advice yeah so meat has become one of those either or you know there's a camp for yes and there's a camp for never you know meat if you're having you're sourcing it well yeah so we okay. have our occasional scandals that arise yeah. up in our butchers if you're sourcing it well it's okay to have meat i would say not necessarily all the time and i'm not saying our everyday in trauma, but you're making it at home you know you're, you know the oil that you're using mm -hmm. you're not deep frying it you never want to deep fry anything mm -hmm. but the occasional meat and i say with everything it's with your fish and your chicken and it Even is like beef goat and meat. beef yeah 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 pork. keep it keep it lean keep it lean okay pork and why i would say meat is okay is there are some people who don't uh, react well with legumes yeah. So they still need a source of protein. Yeah. By the way, everyone's different. Everybody, you know? everybody's different. Some people get different. acidity from watermelon. Yeah. Other people can eat Every, a whole one. A hundred percent. And that's yeah. the thing. So everyone is different. So know your body. Don't be excessive, but do not feel guilty. So be occasional with your meat. And if it's lean and you've made it well, it's fine. It's you get your nutrients from it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to actually preparing healthy meals what yeah. are, would be some of the things maybe staples or something that we need to kind of have on hand you've talked about spices for example right right mm -hmm. um, ideally for every meal you do want to look at your plate and ask yourself is it balanced and by balanced does it have uh, a healthy carbohydrate so a healthy carbohydrate would be your sweet potato or your domas um, or your cassava or whatever you like those are complex so the root tubers are complex they're digested slowly in the body mm -hmm. your energy is even if you're eating white bread it spikes your yeah. blood sugar so that's not a good ca so carbohydrate brown bread, brown so do rice. yeah so do whole grains and do root tubers avoid okay. anything white okay then on your plate you also want to see some protein you know so if it's breakfast if you can have some eggs if you can have beans for the people who can't have eggs even a piece of meat you know it's have some protein or have some yogurt for the people who just don't want a heavy meal yeah um and, and then speaking of yogurt actually yeah, before yeah. you move on you know greek yogurt yeah. now is becoming very popular yeah, here yeah. in kenya yeah uh, but over you know regular yogurt is is greek yogurt something people should be investing in because you know the the regular yogurts they're really yummy too sometimes yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you worry yeah. about the sugar right right so if we're looking at what's great so greek yogurt has more protein than your regular yogurt okay so if you're looking for what's a little bit higher on the health spectrum than greek yogurt yes um of any of the yogurts you use ideally you want to go with the natural the plain the okay. plain one why so that we leave out the sugar and the additives okay yeah you can add honey for yourself so be in charge of how much yeah. sugar you're putting in okay uh, so put in honey put in bananas put in whatever fruit you want to sweeten mm -hmm. but plain yogurt is best greek a bit better 
Okay. Yeah. Great. And um, so I want us to walk through potential meals, okay? Like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Okay. Uh, if you could just give us examples and maybe even for snack options, okay? Because, okay? okay. you know, we're used to that 10 o'clock tea in Kenya. Right, I'm right. sure you can't watch the kamandazi kwa mkono. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's a Kenyan way. But um, okay. maybe you can walk us through like a breakfast. Okay. What would be a good, nutritious breakfast? Okay. So... A good nutritious breakfast would be a decent meal like some sweet potato, an egg, a bit of avocado if you have, and all of this yes. is in you know good quantities. Speaking my language. <laughs> a bit of <laughs> avocado. If you could have some vegetables, some people find it odd to have vegetables in the morning, but if you could have veg at every meal, yeah. So slice some cucumber, slice some tomato. Yeah. Have yesterday's spinach if it's yeah. left over. And spinach and eggs goes really well too. that's a really good meal that's an excellent meal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. so that's like breakfast yeah so w did you say were there any sort of carbs in there that you we had the so we had the sweet potato, sweet potato. for the carbs we had an egg okay. for protein we have a good veggie. fat uh, yeah, which is the avocado, avocado and then some veggie okay if you don't want the egg you can remove it if you could put some beans i'm saying beans because it's easy for people to have or lentils or something that can come in yeah. as well if you want to take that out you could put a small piece of meat or fish or something like that and when you're so, saying eggs are you are you specifically talking about boiled eggs or can can we you spice wish. up you our know, eggs guys you know i like for people to fit within their taste preferences yeah. you know so just use a good oil so if you're going to fry your egg don't pour in a lot of oil mm -hmm. coconut oil is good for cooking mm -hmm. ghee it surprises mm -hmm. people yeah. but ghee is good for cooking um, and then leave out the sunflowers and the other, the vegetable oils, they go rancid, you know, it oh, becomes yeah, yeah. carcinogenic. So wow. we want to avoid those. Even yeah. sunflower oil, because we, people are thinking, you know what, it's That's healthy. That's what we it's were told. Yeah. So for the longest time, even, you know, when I was growing up, we we're using sunflower because this was healthy. But then now with the studies, they found that when you cook with them, they go rancid. Mm. And so they are contributing to carcinogens and toxins in our body. Wow. Um, so what they found is the healthy fats, which are adding value to us, coconut oil, ghee, olive oil. Olive oil is better raw. It doesn't hold up very well to high heat. Okay. So on your salad, like on your salad you can and then it's amazing. Yeah. 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 And with ghee... Does that, I mean, it's, I just, it's so bad because I feel like we've been educated opposite. It was the opposite. Because we were told ghee is terrible. It was terrible, exactly. It. it was terrible. But it was that phase where all fats were being vilified and they didn't. So, you know, like even remember with eggs and cholesterol, yeah. and all fats are bad. But then now as they've looked into the studies, it's like actually the structure of coconut oil and ghee is different from the others. Okay. These ones hold up well to high heat, but more than that, they add value to you. They are in the same category as avocado yeah. and healthy nuts and that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. I need to try cooking. I use <laughs> coconut oil for literally everything. Right. Except I haven't tried except it for cooking. cooking. I'm yeah. just so scared about the taste, It's yeah. like transferring into the food. Right, right. So for some things, so even at home, like I switch around with the different, because I, you know, go with the tastes of the people in my household. Yeah. But for some things, it's amazing. So I don't make the eggs in coconut oil. Okay. I'll still use ghee. But there's a lot, but some people do coconut oil. They're like, we're fine. Yeah. Um, and ghee doesn't have any taste transfer, does it? So for us, it's fine. I've had clients who don't, you know, they're like from the smell, I can't stand it. Mm. So we take that out, but we use coconut and they're completely fine. Okay. They're like, okay. I love coconut. So, so people can just taste. try. Yeah. Try, try something. Try see what works for you. I'm very yeah. shocked about that sunflower oil though. I know. Yeah, that's very, <laughs> <laughs> it's very bad. Um, okay. Uh, before we get to our lunchtime meal, let me uh, just get to some of the feedback here. Good morning, Joyce. Mary from Umoja wanted to know if spices from supermarkets are healthy or how much can be ensure, can be used in ensuring healthy meals. So okay. this, I assume, is those pre-packaged ones. The pre-packaged ones. Yeah. Um, you know, generally, I would say is that the spices are OK. Um, you know, the only problem is if they're pre-packaged, we don't know how long they've sat on the shelf or that sort of thing. Mm. But they tend to be OK anyway. Mm -hmm. If you do have a source of fresher spices, you know, go for that because yeah. then that's ideal. They're really fresh. But, you know, the supermarket is fine as well. OK. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is a great question here because, again, there's a lot of myths and things and yeah. statements when it comes to nutrition and healthy living. Yeah. And uh, someone here is asking, please ask Madam Faith if fruits and water mm -hmm. should be taken before or after a meal. OK. Yeah, that that happens quite often. 
fruits and water. Um, what I do say is, you know, I tend to split them up sort of completely. So for example, like the breakfast that we get, that was a complete meal, yeah. right? So if you wanted to have fruit, I'd say you've already kind of had a big meal then. Why don't you have your fruit as your 10 o'clock sort of snack? Okay. If you're having water around your meal, it's okay. Don't over drink the water. So you're not having your five glasses of water or while you're eating while yeah, you're eating they say don't drink water while you're eating no you can have a little bit you can have a just don't overdo it okay. uh but having a little bit you know most people they're doing half a glass or three quarters they're not doing that much so generally it's fine but if you're um what is overdoing it i had do? one client who was oh what does it do it some people say that it will not dilute but let me non-scientifically say sort of dilute the metabolic process okay, okay. Um, of your digestion um, that's still up in the air okay um, but some people will have a glass of water before okay. their meal and then later have their food that's okay okay that's okay yeah so I don't think you have to really overthink the water it's unlikely unless you're downing like let me have a whole liter before I eat right. you know in the name of losing weight or something like that but okay. that you don't really need to do that what about yeah. the one for fruits you know a lot of people say you should not eat your fruits after the meal you should eat them before I don't know it helps with digestion or so that um, you don't yeah. develop some sort of disease um, well I don't think you would really develop a disease it's uh, it, it, it is about listening to your body I would say um, the breakfast I gave, for example, if you didn't want to have, let's say the sweet potatoes, but you wanted to have an apple instead or something, I would not be opposed to that. But some people feel a bit gassy if they do certain combinations. Mm -hmm. So I, for example, don't like to combine my fruits. I don't feel great when I do it. Mm. Um, so it's a matter of listening to your body. Okay. Um, what I would say about the fruit is it's better consumed in the earlier part of the day. So if you're having supper, um, instead of having your fruit salad after supper, maybe skip that and have your fruit at a different part of the day. Our body digests the fructose better in the earlier part of the day. Oh, so definitely um, don't do fruits for dinner. Yeah, try not to do your fruits as a dessert okay. for dinner, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, someone here is asking, what type of food can you make for someone who's diabetic? Is there a way also to, again, okay. enhance the flavor of the food? Okay, so for someone, so um, I'll try to give a very short answer to what's a big question. Someone who's diabetic, what they'll thrive on is you want to un infuse them with as many nutrients as you can. So vegetables, you can use spices. They'll be fine with the spices. Yeah. But again, listen to them and how they feel. They'll give you feedback on their body and, you know, what's going on. Okay. You know, fruit is okay. Some fruit is okay. Okay. Avoid processed, avoid anything white. All right. Yeah. Uh, I have um, close to no time, so we're going to breeze through these questions yeah. now. Um, so please ask what type of, no, sorry, I just asked that one. But um, is preparing tea with sugar healthy or adding sugar to tea? Mm -hmm. And what are the effects of adding salt to a meal after it's ready? Okay. You don't want to add sugar to your Period. tea or to anything. Right. If you can say goodbye to sugar forever, okay. that would be excellent. That's that. Mm -hmm. Adding salt, well, adding salt after your meal or during, during the meal is just absorbed better into your whatever recipe you're making. While um, you're cooking. While you're cooking. So it's just absorption and taste. In terms okay. of what effect it has on your body, not really. You okay. don't want to over salt, but it's a matter of taste and what your okay. recipe is going to taste like, yeah. All right. Um, let's uh, also just get to our final pointers there about the other meals. So we okay. had done breakfast. So We've very quickly, breakfast, yeah. let's do lunch and dinner. Okay. The structure remains the same. So for lunch, you could have um, um, you could have roasted potatoes. You could have lentils or fish, salad. Again, you could have avocado. You could have avocado at every meal. Okay. You're looking for a healthy fat each time. Um, then dinner time is the same structure. So now if you feel you've had too much meat, you could have a, a bean curry, make it in coconut cream. Mm -hmm. um, you could cut down on your starch in the evening, especially if you're not a very active person. So you yeah. could just have your bean curry with a really good salad or with good uh, spinach or good sukuma. Mm -hmm. um, you could have soup for dinner, a nice mm -hmm. vegetable soup for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, that, okay. that's, that's so it's, it's really about just going back to the basics. The then. ground. We just want food that's whole and from the ground. Mm -hmm. From the shamba, your auntie's shamba, your mom's shamba, your grandma's shamba. Mm -hmm. Get those, you know, that's how we're bringing the costs down. So it's not expensive anymore. It's yeah. 
you're getting it from your shamba. That's organic. Yeah. You don't have to go to a fancy shop yeah. and spend extra. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And for those of you who like fries, a good alternative for you is to do sweet potato fries. Amazing. And I like to bake them in the oven. Well done. That's yeah. it. Now, if you brush them with coconut oil, yes. if you want to test and I need see to. I need you. to test this coconut oil. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll come back here and say I'm a believer. I'll take one for the team, guys. Please How about take that? one for the team. <laughs> do that with ndoma. It's amazing. Oh, Cut it? them and you'll make ndoma crisps with coconut oil. It's amazing, guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, Faith, thank you so much for coming thank through you to Full for Circle me. with Joyce. I do yeah. appreciate your time. Thank you for And these me. insights that you've shared with us. Uh, Shan, I believe our time is gone. There's no time for a song. Uh, I believe not. And so with that said, Asanteni Sana again, guys, for your company today. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for all of your feedback and your comments. Let's do this again tomorrow. Thursday, of course, you can look forward to our Change Makers segment in our second hour. Until then, have yourselves a blessed day. I'll see you soon. Ciao.